Hello everybody, I'm here with an example of graphical technique uh, as it relates to rectilinear motion. So rectilinear motion is motion where the object is traveling along a straight path. And of course, if you have the equation of the motion, uh, like if you have acceleration as a function of time or function of any variable, you should be able to figure out velocity and eventually the um, the position. But sometimes the uh, acceleration is given graphically or velocity is given graphically. In this example, we have a car that is traveling with a given acceleration diagram as shown here. So here acceleration in meters per second squared, you see the acceleration is a constant 20 meters per second squared for five seconds. And then it decelerates at the rate of half as much 10 or negative 10 meters per second square over an unknown interval of time. So here I put delta t for this interval from 5 to t prime. Now we know that initially at t equals 0, the velocity is 0. So we know we got to start right here on the velocity diagram. So uh, let me tell you my objective actually is to plot the velocity diagram and actually the position diagram for which I forgot to label this axis as in meters. Okay, so plot the velocity diagram and position diagram and also determine the time t prime at which the car will come to rest. So the car starts from rest, accelerates and then decelerates and then will eventually come to rest. So we know actually we have to end up at zero speed again. So after whatever so many seconds the, the speed would be zero again. So how do we go about plotting uh, the velocity diagram and position diagram and also calculate the time t prime? It's very simple. Concept is very simple. So we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And this eventually means that v is the integral of acceleration, right? But actually, this is really v2 minus v1 or delta v. So basically, this equation, net velocity is equal to, we know the integration means area, area under acceleration diagram. So if we go ahead and calculate the area under the acceleration here, so for example, we know that this is uh, 20 by 5, so this is a rectangle of magnitude of, or the area rather of 100. Right? And this area here, we don't, we don't know what delta t is, but this is a negative 10 times delta t. So this area is negative 10 times delta t. All right, so now we say, okay, we're starting at zero speed, right? And then we keep adding the area. Uh, this is pretty much, guys, if you have taken the mechanics of material course and you're familiar with the sh uh, shear and bending moment diagrams, Basically, your acceleration diagram is the given load diagram, and the velocity diagram becomes the shear diagram, and position diagram becomes actually the moment diagram. The same concept, with the exception that there is a negative sign the way it was shown in the uh, mecha mechanics of material. So you guys remember that the derivative of shear with respect to position was negative of W, negative of distributed load. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back here. So we're starting at zero position. We add this area to it. That will give you our next value of velocity, which is 100. So this actually becomes, oops, I move this guy by mistake. Okay, so this becomes 100, right? So the question is, how do I connect zero to 100? Since acceleration is a constant, this is a constant, then you integrate a constant like a 20, what are you going to get? You're going to get 20t, which is actually a linear or a straight line. All right, then the current value of velocity is 100. If you add the next area to it, which is minus 10 delta t, you should get the next velocity. But we already know the next velocity must be zero. So actually, if we calculate delta t here, it becomes 10. So again, we got to go decelerate at that rate and reach zero. Again, another straight line. So now we determine that this is 10. Okay, so this is 5. Of course, this is not to scale. Uh, but in any case, so we already got delta t, which means t prime actually is 15 seconds, 5 plus 10. 
So here we go. We determine T prime. Okay, now what about plotting the uh, position diagram? We continue with the same idea that velocity is the rate of change of position. Therefore, delta S becomes the integral of velocity, which again implies that net displacement or net position is equal to, what is that? Integral of V with respect to time. Area under V. Under velocity. So let's go ahead and find the area on the velocity diagram now. Area of this triangle here is what? Half base times the height. 100 times 5, that's 500 divided by 2, that's 250. And the area of this guy would be 100 times 10, 1000 divided by 2, 500. So again, we know that we're starting at zero position, right? So we add the 250 to zero. That will give us the next position of our particle, or, or the car in this case. So we go to 0 to 250, that would be 250. How do we connect 0 to 250? Now remember that when you integrate a first order, which is a straight line, you're going to get a parabola. Is the parabola going to be concave up like that or concave down? And the answer is if you are accelerating, if you have positive A, or if you have a positive slope for your line, it's going to be concave up like that. Whenever you have an acceleration. Let me actually erase this for you. And if you're decelerating, which is the case here, right? Which is the case here. Or your slope is negative as it goes down, right? Uh, you're going to get uh, concave down. So right now, the current value of position is 250. I add the next area, this 500 to it, right? So that will give me what? 750. So 750, again, not to scale, but concave down because it's slowing down because it's decelerating. So basically, this car will travel 15 seconds based on the acceleration diagram that is given, right? And it will travel 750 meters. Uh, so this was really a trivial case uh, of uh, using... Uh, what, what is also known as erratic motion because the acceleration keeps changing. Uh, so I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video and uh, it would be a good idea to subscribe to my channel if you want uh, because I'll uh, frequently put uh, new videos uh, as it relates, of course, to the courses that I teach here at Brentford and at Northeastern. Thank you very much. See you guys later.